So what I'm going to teach you to create today is this logo animation, which looks exactly like this. So it's not rocket science, but it is really powerful and really cute. And I want to show you how I thought about this and how we created it. It is not as complicated as it sounds, and I hope you'll really enjoy this tutorial. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and I am a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how to create their own incredible brand and graphics. And this one is a tutorial on Canva today because Canva is obviously really useful for a wide variety of things. And if you don't already know, I teach a whole lesson on creating your own logo in Canva and the really, the really important things you need to know about that, be able to do that legally and do that really well and do that in a high quality. And today I want to show you how you can create your own logo animation in Canva. Logo animations are one, really fun. Two, they're a really great way to kind of maybe you could add this to an email or maybe you could add this to part of your social media um, template. So maybe you can kind of add this in at the end of some of the posts you're doing. I'm not sure where you're going to use this or even if you're doing, if you're doing like lots of tutorials and videos in your own life, then having this little animation can be really helpful. Okay. So first things first, we need to create a new design. You can create this in literally any size you want to. I'm going to do just Instagram square post, but you can do a video post. You can do a story post, a real post, an email banner, anything you're after, because what I'm going to show you is how you can create this and turn it into a video formatted post without having to have a video format post, if that makes sense. You'll know what I mean in a moment. So first you wanna insert your logo. So if you've created this in Canva, this is gonna be a much easier step for you. The logo that I used for this original animation was a logo that one of my own students made inside my program. And so I'm just gonna paste this one in. This is with her full permission, by the way. She is well aware I am doing this with her logo and I will be giving this to her in case she wants to use it. Um, and so pretty much just so you know, she um, drew this little icon herself and we kind of scanned it in and created a vector for it for a Canva and got special little glyphs for her logo design. It was all really awesome. But what I want to show you is how you can actually animate this. So in Canva, there is a whole animate suite. If you haven't found it yet, it's pretty great. If I just click on a page and click animate over here, you've got all these different options here. What I'm actually going to do though, is instead of mainly using those, I want to actually use different frames. So if you know anything about animation, all animations are pretty much just lots of different frames on top of each other, connecting to one another, telling a story, and they're just really small changes. And we can do that same kind of thing with, while using pages inside our Canva. And so what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this first page and then create a second frame. So to duplicate a page, all you need to do is either press these three dots and press duplicate, or you can just press command or control D on your computer and it will duplicate that. So now I've got two pages in my design. If you can't see this little view down the bottom here of your pages and you've got more of a scrolly view, the way that you fix that is by pressing this little arrow here and hitting show pages. It's by far my favorite view. All right, next I'm going to work out what my animation is going to be. The really great thing to do at this point is to think about your logo from a more conceptual level. Like, do you have any concepts that play inside your logo you could play on with this? Can you move the logo around in a way that is related to something inside your logo? For me, for this logo, it's kind of got a bit of a water theme. Island, village, um, village is less watery, but the icon is watery and island is watery. And the reason she chose this kind of language and phrases for her brand was because she lives near the beach. And so I want to use that kind of idea in this brand. And so one thing that I might be able to do is use some water vibes. So one thing I'm going to try is by grabbing, going over to elements over here and typing in waves, water waves, something like that. Maybe even just grabbing something like this that I can use for my logo. So what I'm going to actually do is create lots of different frames that bring this together. So I'm going to make all of these different colors into the same color as my background, which for me today is going to be white. You don't have to make it white. You can make it whatever background color you want to, whatever's probably going to be most useful for what you want to maybe apply it to in the future. Then I'm going to make this larger. And so my first slide, I'm going to take this away. I'm going to just cut that away from here. My first slide is just plain. My second slide, I want to start having the logo disappear under a wave. So I'm going to actually grab this little white wave I've got here and I'm going to bring it up slowly so it just starts to hit over the logo. Then I'm going to click on my page down here, duplicate it and bring my, bring my wave up a little bit. I'm actually going to move my wave around a little bit so it kind of feels a bit wavy. <laughs> um, just a fun fact, if you are wanting to do this in a little, in a more of a fancy way, um, there is a Canva app over here that lets you make your own waves. I'm not going to go into that today, but that's a fun way to do this as well. Again, I'm going to duplicate this design, bring this up even more, maybe move it over here, click duplicate, 
Now at the end, I probably actually want the logo to totally disappear. So I'm just going to delete everything on that one. So if I just click on this and use my arrow keys, you can kind of see how the in animation is going. If I'm, I'm unhappy with anything, this is a great time to change it. I'm not happy with this jump here. One of these jumps looks a bit jolty. Eh. Actually, no, I'm happy with that. <laughs> so now I can actually change this into being a video formatted design. So if you didn't know, if you click this duration button here, it's going to change this into a video, no matter what kind of design you're in. So if I click this, it's changing it into a video and it's saying to me that each of these little pages is five seconds long. Obviously that is far, 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 far too long for an animation to work. We want the transition to the pages to be quite quick. And so this is going to be a lot of like just testing and seeing what works. But for me, I'm going to select one page, hold shift on my keyboard and select the end page. And then I can click this little button up here for edit timing and change the timing. I can either use this uh, slider here or I can type in what I want it to be. So I'm just going to do 0.2 seconds and see how that goes. To test it, I'm going to um, click down onto my um, timeline down here, click my mouse at the start of the first slide and press play. That looks pretty cool. I'm happy with that timing. So I'm going to leave it there. Something else you can do too is add in a transition. Canva has a few great transitions here. They're my favorite for this kind of thing being the match and move and it kind of matches things between the slides. So I'm actually going to click all of these again and apply this transition between them. I can make it a really short transition or a bit shorter, a bit a long transition or a bit shorter. And there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually have the waves come back down because ideally I think a great animation, especially if it's a short one, is the fact that it can actually repeat itself over and over again. It just means that you could make this into a GIF for your brand and just goes in and out, in and out. It could be even a great thing to use on your website. So what I'm going to do now is grab my last slide here, but move to, this, to the slide before the last slide and actually duplicate this slide. So I'm going to duplicate it. Another way you can do this is by actually holding down Alt or Option on your keyboard. This is for Mac and bringing it across and you'll see that it's actually duplicated that slide as I've clicked and dragged it. And it means that I can now duplicate that. And so here I've got this same slide here as the same slide I've got here after my blank slide. The reason I'm doing this is that I'm going to have the slide and the animation reverse itself. So if I just go back through my, through my animation and keep on clicking the page before and bring it to the end, page before bringing it to the end, that's going to help my animation to then reverse itself so that I can have a really repeatable animation. Then to test if you've, worked, if you've got all the slides, you might have missed one. I'm going to go to play. How cool is that? So that's one option for an animation, or I'm going to show you a couple of the others that I also applied. Um, but that is by far my favorite one for this particular logo because it actually matches what the logo is trying to do. Another thing you can do is actually just play with the, the, the layer of the, of the shapes or the movement of the shapes. So I'm just going to grab my first slide again because that's the best one. I'm going to paste in this new one. And then what I'm going to do is animate this. So one thing you could do and that I've done in my original one, if I just show you this again, is I've just made it larger, wiggled it around and made it smaller again. So the way that you can do that is literally just by using that frame idea that I just mentioned, but bringing the letters and the, and the words in. If you wanted to do this with the individual letters, you could totally even move the letters around and have them moving around and up and down or up and down and jiggling. You can totally do that. The reason I'm not doing that with this particular logo is that if I just actually click in here, you can see that the A and the N are actually joined. It's called a glyph in this kind of font. And so because we've done that for this logo, then it doesn't make sense for me to try to separate it because I can't separate these letters. But if you have a, have a logo that's got separate letters feel free to kind of jiggle them around a little bit or bring them in and out or make them larger or move them whatever you kind of want to do but this is what I'm going to try with this one here is just by moving the actual sizing of the logo and the rotation of it so what I'm going to do first is actually group this together so I'm just going to click my mouse and drag to select everything press command or control g to group it and I'm going to do really one really important thing that I'm going to have to undo later, but it's going to help me in the mean, in the meantime. And that is I'm going to duplicate it again. So I'm just going to press copy and paste. And I've also got two of them. I'm going to select the background ones. I'm going to go to my position here, layers, and I'm going to select the background one. And I'm going to make that transparent, just really low. I'm going to click on the three dots and I'm going to lock it. The point of that being is that as I'm animating things, I want to make sure that I'm always leaving it in the center and then I'm always bringing it back to a place that's quite similar. And so if you're moving things around a lot, having just knowing where that original base is, is really helpful. At the end, we'll go through and delete that base so it's not visible anymore. But for now, it's helping us keep things really aligned. So I'm going to just grab this one. I'm going to actually leave it this size for the first one, duplicate my slide again, and then make this a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll rotate a little bit, duplicate again, make it a little bit smaller again, rotate it again a little bit, bring it back into the center. I'm just going to keep on doing that. All right, so I'm going to press play over here and just see if I'm liking it. 
Yeah, that's really cute. Okay, so what I'm going to actually do is go through and now delete the, my duplicates of each of those designs. So this one that I locked, I'm just going to delete that uh, just to make sure that I don't because I don't really need it anymore. It's done its job of serving its purpose of letting me know where everything originally was. I probably didn't need it for this particular sort of style of animation because it was quite a simple animation. But if you're moving things around a bit more and need a kind of a center to know where to bring things back to, it's just a helpful tip to know. So just keep that in mind for depending on the style of animation that you choose. All right, so I've got that going. Now, again, I'm going to maybe do a little bit of a wiggle down the bottom here. This is a bit of a reverse of what I did in the introduction one that I showed you. I'm going to duplicate this page and wiggle it this way. And I'm going to grab these two pages. So if you can see it, I'm working down the bottom here. I'm going to hold down shift and select both of these pages. Then I'm going to hit duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And so I've just made four or five different copies of this just so that it can rotate around. Another way you can actually do this though, I'm going to delete this and show you the other way to do this. It's probably easier to be honest. And so Canva also has an animation feature. If I go to animate here, if I scroll down, you can see there's a motion effect. So I can actually use the wiggle effect. So if I click on here, wiggle, and I move this intensity around, see if this works. I think it looks like it's having trouble. Oh, it's because it's too short. So <laughs> the reason that didn't work was because the wig, I've only got 0.1 of a second on for this page. So I'm actually going to change this to one full second and see if that enjoys it anymore. I'm also going to change these to being 0.2 of a second and see what that looks like. Then I'm going to do what I did before where I duplicated the pages so it could bring itself back out. <laughs> so you just see that little wiggle in the middle there. That little wiggle was the wiggle that I put in there from um, my Canva animate feature. Um, so I'm actually just going to click on that again. Might make the intensity, <laughs> that intensity was a little bit too hectic. Make a little bit calmer and I might make that this a bit shorter than 0.9, um, 0.5 and we'll see how that goes. So this animation is coming together. If I look at it from the start, Beautiful. And so you can play with these as much as you want. You could add in more animation. You could animate each of these letters or words separately. You could move this around and then move this around and move that around. And it could all be totally different. You could even wiggle or flicker or do any of those little animation styles to each of these different objects. Play with these and see what matches your brand style. And if you want something even more fancy, you've also got this create animation option where you can actually click on an object and bring it and draw kind of where you want it to go. So say you wanted something like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a bit messy, but you'll be able to see what it looks like if I just do this. I'm going to make this a little bit longer than 0.1 of a second so that you can see what I'm going for here. And you can see how you can kind of draw around these things. So that's another option if you want something a bit more fancy, but that one doesn't work for this design. So I'm not you're doing going to do that for this one. And so once you're finished and you're happy with your design, you can save this as a GIF or a movie file. So if you just press share and download here, you can select this MP4 video file, which Canva has picked up that I'm working on a video because I've changed it to that duration slide. Um, and so you can just download it as a video or you can download it as a GIF. Um, note that GIFs don't have transparent backgrounds so that you can't have it like this really cool transparent thing you could use in your Instagram stories, for example. But you could put this as, as an icon on your website or as a little part of your email footers. Like there's so many cool things you could do with this. So have fun and play around with that. Experiment with it. See if you can get really conceptual in the way that you do the logos. And if you're looking for inspiration, just literally search like logo animation examples on YouTube and there'll be heaps of examples in there to kind of spark your creativity as well. So thank you for joining me. If you are looking to have help with designing your own logo in Canva, I have a little course that you might find useful. But before you do that course, I've just got a little freebie that can be so, so useful to help you begin to form the foundations of your brand because there's no point having a really great brand or a really great logo unless you have the solid brown foundation. So I've got a challenge. It's called the Seriously in Business Challenge and it's just three quick videos that you can binge really quickly you can watch them over a few days it's got heaps of resources heaps of education heaps of canva tips that will help you to create your really solid brand for your business um, and i'll pop the link and all of the information for that in the description below so thanks for watching if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that little bell button if you want to and if you are on instagram can i recommend heading over to my my instagram at white dear gd and giving me a hello um, letting me know that you found me on this tutorial and what you thought of it and if you want to i would even love to see the tutorial and all the animation you made Feel free to send that through to me too. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you in a couple weeks for another new tutorial. Bye.